Good afternoon, friends. It's such a joy to be with you on this beautiful, beautiful day, and especially here in the prayer garden of Blackwater United Methodist Church. Let us begin our time together with one poet's account of his experience of composing a poem that would touch the lives of the people of God down through the decades. He would say that his words describe the greatest morn in history. One day in March, 1912, I drew my Bible toward me. It opened at my favorite chapter, John 20. As I read it that day, I seemed to be part of the scene. I became a silent witness to that dramatic moment in Mary's life when she knelt before her Lord who has died and was buried and cried out to him, Rabboni! My hands were resting in the Bible while I stared at the wall. As the light faded, I seemed to be standing at the entrance of a garden, looking down a gently winding path shaded by olive branches. I awakened in full light, gripping the Bible with muscles tense and nerves vibrating. Under the inspiration of the vision, I wrote as quickly as the words could be formed. In the Garden. This was published in 1912, and it's a gospel song written by an American songwriter, C. Austin Miles, who was born in 1868. According to Miles' great-granddaughter, this poem set to music was written in a cold, dreary, leaky basement in Pittman, New Jersey that didn't even have a window in it, let alone a view of a garden. I want to remind you of uh, just the first verse uh, of, that, of that hymn. I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ear the Son of God discloses, and He walks with me, and He talks with me, and He tells me that I am His own, and the joy that we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. As I sit here in this beautiful setting, I'm reminded that even when we are physically alone, not uh, with another person maybe, God still walks with us, and God does still talk with us. As he met Mary that first morning of his resurrection, he meets his children, you and me, every single day that we open our lives to him. In this season of uh, walking through and journeying through this COVID-19 uh, pandemic, we all feel alone in a whole new way. We want to look into the eyes of our friends and our family, those who we have not seen for over a week, those who we have been separated from. We yearn to sit side by side, worshiping our wonderful, beautiful God together. We long for that time when we will again collaborate face to face with our colleagues and our coworkers. We crave learning together in educational settings. And our hearts ache for our children and our youth who are not socializing together in a real way. We all feel within us the desire to connect, the desire to be physically together, to not feel alone. But here's the good news, and we as Christians know that there is always good news, even in the midst of our darkest times. You are never alone. In the 34th Psalm of the Old Testament, we read these life-giving words. The Lord is close to those whose hearts are breaking. You know, I believe um, in many different ways all our hearts are breaking right now. For the lack of being near one another, for the lack of not being able to give those who we worship with and work with and play with, um, those hugs and those high fives, um, those spoken words that we can speak not six feet away from each other, but two feet away from each other. 
And I want to uh, remind you or tell you for the first time, if you have not uh, seen this yet, tonight at 6.30, we are going to join together over social technology and we are going to share the gift of Holy Communion. All you need is a bread substance, a cracker or a pita bread, a bagel, a tortilla chip. I mean, anything um, that um, has that quality of bread and grain to it. And then also a liquid. And if you have grape juice that we use here at the church uh, every week, uh, of course, use that. Uh, but don't let that stop you to uh, not participating with us. Whatever liquid you have on hand, God will bless that. God will make that the nourishment that you need uh, to remain near Him and close to Him as your next breath. So I hope that you will join us either on the Table Facebook page, and that will be again at 6.30, or you can join us on YouTube, and that, uh, that post will be called The Table Church. So e either of those two ways, it's my prayer and it's my hope that you will gather your family together, light a candle, have the Bible before you, and just know uh, more than anything that your God is with us. You'll also see a link on this post that, um, that I will post shortly of our own Dr. Justin West, who will play that beautiful hymn in the garden for us. And so let that be balm to your hearts. Let that be the nourishment that you need to remind yourselves that you are never alone and that God is always right there with you. So as a way of closing our time in prayer, um, what I'm going to do is share uh, an affirmation of faith that's in our hymnals that uh, we sometimes use in the context of worship. And this is written by our brothers and sisters of the United Church of Canada. If you know some of these words, speak them. And if you don't, just absorb them. Let them wash over you anew. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect and creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope in life, in death, in life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. Have a beautiful evening and I look forward to joining with you tonight online at 6.30 p.m. Thank you.